Barton FM, following Barton Town. Sport on Barton FM is sponsored by Easy Buy. Welcome to a review of Barton Town's season to date. I'm Richard Watson. I'm joined by club chairman Mark Gregory, first team manager Rob Watson, media man Aaron Irwin and programme editor Trevor Richens. I mean, the first thing I was going to ask was how, how difficult was it preparing for this season during the summer, given that it wasn't known when it was going to start and all that sort of thing? How did you go about your, your preparation? It was a bit of a nightmare, really. It was more, uh, in terms of the training side, it was more just trying to get at least at least eight weeks in so the lads could gel and work together. Um, the, the hardest thing was actually booking games because we didn't know what we could do. Usually I'd get about seven pre-season, seven to eight pre-season games in, whereas this season we managed to get four. Um, and it was all it was all last minute for clubs and that's why I felt it was difficult to plan this season. Um, but overall, I thought the lads did well in pre-season. The hardest thing I had was um, when you've got about eight games in pre-season, you've got a big squad, you can play, you give uh, more players more game time, whereas I had to assess a squad within four games. Um, so it was very difficult and then we went straight into the FA Cup. How was it from the club's point of view, Mark, keeping things ticking over, not knowing if you're going to get any income in or anything like that? Tough, difficult, um, but we was in a good position. So um, it's like Rob said, it was just really a waiting game and the income needed to come in faster you know, than it did. But um, you know, the, club's, the club was in a good position. You know, other clubs, maybe not. But um, you know, we was we was okay, so it was just it was just a waiting game, and um, it just glad it started. So going on to the um, on to the games, and we start with the the FA Cup, and um, a, a terrific result winning at uh, Spalding, and I think from what I remember of the game, it was a, a much deserved win. How, how did you see that game, Rob? Um, yeah, it was a difficult task, obviously, Spalding are a good club, a league above us. Um, but, you know, I went into it full of confidence, felt that the squad we had at the time uh, could certainly go and do the job. And it's never easy to travel to somewhere like Spalding on a Tuesday night. It's it's quite a long way. Um, obviously, it was the first time we'd all play together in, in a competitive game. Um, but I felt the lads did well. The only, any negative, really, was I lost three players in that game. Um, obviously, Ben Inchcliffe was coming back from an injury. Uh, Luke Anderson um, had a head injury. Uh, Chaz Fisher had a hamstring injury. Um, and then there was one more who had to come off as well. Um, so it was difficult that, really, obviously losing three players. But I felt that just came from from a short pre-season straight into games. So there were going to be quite a few knocks in the pages. <laughs> and the first of um, Grant Tate's wonder goals of the season coming up at the end of the game to, to uh, wrap it all up. That was a terrific strike, wasn't it? Yeah, I think, I think with Grant, he's a very talented lad. Um, I just felt with the goal, it was, you know, right at the end of the game. Um, what I like about Grant is he'll take that risk, where some players at that point in the game might have played it a bit safer. He saw an opportunity and he seized it, and it was a, a cracking goal and a good way to finish the game. Was it one of those games when you thought the, game, the goals weren't going to come? It was frustrating because I did feel that we were the better side in uh, in, in all the game, really. Usually games of two halves, but I felt in both halves we were the better side. And um, I felt Spalding's goal was a worldy strike. No keeper in the world would have saved that. He's hit it sweet. It's gone in the top corner. After five minutes, you felt like oh, it's going to be tough. But it's come from 1-0 down um, to dominate the game and then score three goals. I was happy either way. It didn't matter when the goals came. Um, and just talking about the goalkeeper, has had an excellent season. Did he just come out of the Pumba Prem? Uh, Charlie's had a lot of experience, to be fair, but he's always been like number two or three at uh, some bigger clubs. His main um, his main spell in football was actually in the USA. Uh, he played for two universities when he was out there. He then came back and had spells with Gainsborough, uh, North Ferriby, uh, when they was in the higher levels. And then he just wanted to play week in, week out, so he played for a really successful Chalk Lane squad. Um, I was always keen, I was actually keen to get him last season with Dents. I was very keen to go in and get him, but he just wanted to play. Uh, I spoke to him in pre-season, early doors, and said, come down. He's, um, he's such a good lad. He, he's very, he, he lacks confidence at times. And I think as the season's grown, he's, he's really come out of shell. He's a really good lad to have in the dressing room. And he's, uh, for me, he's, he's been one of the 
big, biggest signings, really. He's kept us in games. There's no hiding that. Um, he's an excellent lad off the pitch as well, and he's always willing to learn and improve. And as a manager, you couldn't ask for more, really. Anybody else got anything on the Spalding game? What a game for me! Um, obviously, obviously, all the hard work in pre-season, uh, and then to go down there for me and um, you know beat them three to one at half time. It was very frustrating. You can see the frustration on Rob's face, to be fair, um, because we was chance after chance after after chance and we're all, all sat there at half time thinking this is not going, going need to happen but the lads dug deep and uh, well deserved the victory and um, unfortunately the, you know the bad thing about that that game was seeing Noel Burdett limp, limping off uh, which obviously was going to be he was going to be a promising a player this a season and I think we're missing him um, but that was that was the only negative of the game uh, and we all drove on very happy and was thinking that, wow, this is going to be a cracking start. But as as we all well know, we felt unlucky with inj- injuries and all being the first one. Now the highlights of Barton Town against Spalding United. Pictures by Spalding United TV.
And then we move on to the um, the next FA Cup game against uh, Corn. And, and looking at that game, it should it should really have been all over by half time. What was what was your your views of the uh, the Corn game? Everything I set out to do with the lads was applied. We just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, unfortunately. We had some very clear chances. Um, obviously, Josh missing the penalty, which was disappointing, but you know he's a big lad. He'll pick himself back up. And I just felt everything we did, we, we executed well, barring put it in the net. You know, you look at some games and you think, we were never going to win that. But if they perform like that week in, week out, we're, you know, I couldn't ask for more. We'd win more games than we'd uh, lose and draw. Um, I felt Quorn were a good team as well. You know, they were going to get promoted if it weren't for COVID. We went there, we took the sword to them, but unfortunately they t- they had two chances scored. We had twenty odd chances and didn't. And that's it's football at times. It's more than where you go in the dressing room, you're disappointed, but you can't really fault the lads. Uh, you can look at the individual goals and break that down, but I think it just it's one of them days in football. Where you can honestly say it just wasn't our day. You know, I said to the lads, there's going to be times in the dressing room where you know, we play really, really poor, but we win. And that was one of them games where I felt we played really, really well and we just lost. It was just unfortunate. And that day, Keith they... made some great saves, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I thought he was, he was man of the match. You know, I think both sides agreed that. Uh, he just had an excellent game, but he is an excellent keeper as well. So, uh, you know, you need a good keeper in your squad to win your matches. And we also had a prob- possible, well, an issue with uh, what could have been a nasty head injury as well. Yeah, I think that unsettled us a little bit. Um, at that time in the game, we'd had a lot of rhythm. Things were going well for us. And then uh, Robbie, it was a weird one because he got caught and then that kind of carried on. The next minute, he's on the floor. And it's uh, for me, the player's safety always comes first. Uh, you know, football is just a game at this level. Um, you know, so I was really glad that Robbie was all right. And thanks to the people who took him to the hospital as well. Um, a lot of the club officials looked after him so we could manage and carry on with the game and it's never easy when you get an injury away from home because you have to change things quite quickly um, and then you do you worry about that player as well we're in the change rooms at the end uh, we're close to the squad and we were concerned for him but you know pleasing it there was nothing there major it just got knocked out for a short amount of time uh, and they have uh, an artificial pitch don't they so does that make a difference playing on that um, I'm a big fan of grass uh, you know there's no hiding from there I think the, the benefits of having a 4G picture, more community use. Um, yeah, you get obviously or most of your games are on with the weather. Um, but I just feel that grass is where the game's played at. It's where it's played at the top level. Now when you go up to the football league level, you have to have a grass pitch. Um, but the benefit you've got is you can always ideally play football. Um, whereas sometimes we'll, you might go to away teams and the pitch is off or it can disrupt your game plan. But I always feel that Teams at this level need a bit of both. They need to play win ugly uh, and play nice football when they can. Obviously, that game saw us drop out of the FA Cup. Um, how does that affect plans for for you, Mark, and the, the club going forward in those competitions? Does it could it be fairly lucrative to go much further up? This is my fifth season at the Rain, and I always like a good cup run. Um, I just think it's good for the club, good for the fans. Uh, it's good for the players. I mean, it's just generally good for everybody. So when we go out of the cup, especially early, yeah, we, come on, we're never going to win the cup. But um, yeah, to go out early was disappointing, especially on that day because I thought we played absolutely excellent. The way Rob plays or wants his squad to play, which is on the, which is wide, and when we get it on the floor, you know, we look we look such a good good team. Uh, when it's in the, in the air, I'm not too sure. Uh, but that particular day, we just played fo- the football on on the floor. And was that because of the pitch? Maybe. Um, and the amount of opportunities we created was just unreal. And yeah, it was disappointing to uh, go out. And it's good. The FA Cup is good financially for, for, for clubs like ourselves. So yeah, disappointing financially, but um, not so disappointed on the day. Because again, it, you know, we looked very... Um, we look very good. Very good. Now for the action, Corn against Barton Town. Pictures by Corn TV. Oh. 
Vars defeat at uh, Janet Richard, um, and you could certainly see why that uh, lad there, had Grimshaw, scored a bucket load of goals for him for them, and he got another two, didn't he? Um, what were your views of the that game? I, I was disappointed. Um, you know, you can't hide that a three 0 loss. I felt that actually in the game we was in it, we competed well. Um, you know, we've had a few casualties from the Quorn game. Two massive gaps, really. We lost Taz in that Quorn game, although he carried on and played on. Uh, and Matt Plummer got a knock. Um, and, that, and when you've got, well, at that time, we had Noel out, Chaz out, um, Bizzer had a hamstring injury, Matt Plummer, Taz as well. It, it just felt like we went there and it was, it was more survival mode. And they're a good team, to be fair. You know, I've kept an eye on their results. Um, they've done well. They did well in the competition as well. It was just disappointing because I felt... We're at this point where you know we could lose a goal and park the bus for a bit, but I just feel with the attacking options that we've got, we had to go for it, especially away from home. Um, and we did, and, and you know the, the goals that they scored, if you watch them back, one Lacey's tried to clear, it's just happened to hit the lad on the back, it's fell to their striker. Another one we're pushing forward. Um, but I felt in that game as well, we had to get a load of chances still. Luke Anderson had a number of chances, Ben Inchcliffe had some chances, and Batty come on as well. He created a few chances, and it just was a, it was a difficult time. Cause I just felt like we, we couldn't fault the lads. As a manager, I couldn't pick anybody out who wasn't trying to play hard or work hard for the club. It was just things weren't going for us, and it, we just needed to turn that. Um, and obviously, later on in the season, it has, and we're just looking to build on that. Any other comments on that, Cup uh, Tie? I think if Rob, I think if, if Rob can really remember, that was the first time me and Rob had a meeting after the game because, you know, Rob Rob knew I was very disappointed with that game, um, but you, you know the chairman and the, the the manager has to have these a, a, a meetings, um, and it was a positive meeting to be fair and. Um, yeah, I think it was just a game to I forget for when I made. It was just one of them games. And then we, we start the, the league season. You probably couldn't have much tougher starts than Grimsby Borough and uh, Liversidge away. 
and short key players as well. The Grimsby game was a bit of a disaster, wasn't it? But I thought they, the Liversidge game was a really good show in that one. Yeah, I They're clearly a good side. The Borough game, it was, you know, it was Borough at the best and Barton at the worst. And a team like that at this level, they're going to score six goals. It was disappointing. We we started that game with four players out missing. Matt Plummer, credit to Matt, he tried to play with a calf injury. He had to come off after 20 minutes. We didn't have to put Josh Baker, who, you know, has been one of our best midfielders at, um, at right back. We didn't have to put our two full backs at centre half. Um, it, it was very difficult. It was one of them where, as a manager, you, you look at it and you, you're disappointed. And it's the first time that I, I questioned the lads. And you know, the changing room was a, a somber place at the end. And I, I sat back on the way home and just, I, I still want to kick every football on that pitch. Um, and, and, and I look at the lads, and it wasn't again to do with effort and stuff like that. It was just mistakes at tea times, and we was at a a time where we, we you know, was carrying a squad. A lot of our key players that I feel that would have been in our starting eleven were missing. And then we go to Liversidge, again, a bit wounded. Um, and Borough and Liversidge are two teams that I fully think will be in the top five or six. Uh, Liversidge, I think, will be top, could win it or top two or three. Uh, went to Liversidge and we put on a good performance. Um, you know, the, the lads, the one thing for me is I've always said to the lads is, you know, we're not going to win every game. That, that goes without saying, but you have to compete in every game. You have to show that you want to be at the club. You know, the, the chairman, the board, the support is massively on and off the pitch. When you're getting paid a wage, you have to earn that wage. Now, money doesn't always buy you wins, but it should buy you commitment and effort and desire. That's something that I will never not accept from a player. And we went to Liversidge and we, we put bodies on the line. We, we fought for every, go, for every chance. Um, Joe Walton up there, he's, he's an handful and I felt we dealt with him at the time and you only have to look at their front line it's four players that have all played higher on top money and they're going to be up there and I just felt that in the game it was two mistakes um, that cost us, Josh gave the penalty away, uh, which you know he held his hands up and then there was a mix up between Nate Pete and Charlie um, the attitude of Nate Pete and Charlie though was everything I wanted to see they were both disappointed Charlie rings me up straight away and wants to get down on the pitch to do some work on it. Uh, and Nate Pete reflects on it and holds his hands up. And it's disappointing, but you, you know it's um, it was a tough start to the league. But no league was won in the first five or six games anyway. Um, and it just showed that we had a lot more character. Any other thoughts on those two games? Less said about Grooms for the better, really. Yeah. Um, Liversidge was a lot better. We looked good, scored some goals. Um, and like Rob says, competing against some kind of teams, I think we'll be in the right places. It was a good drive home, it wasn't it, uh, as a um, yeah. after Grinsbury. <laughs> we didn't say a word to each other, did we? We didn't say a word to each other, no, not at all. It was that disappointing. <laughs> but hey, hey, it was one of them games, and um, yeah, I, th- I thought Matty got a, a goal going off. Was we just didn't get our, our shape, our shape back, and we just made mistake after mistake. And Rob, Rob said it all for them two first games. I just felt that you know the mistakes kept the work creep, creeping in, and I, I still believe to this day that Liverpool wasn't a better team than, than ourselves. Yeah, I agree. We, we did compete against him. And then we move on to the, the first home game against Hansworth and the, and the second half performance. That was the defending, I thought, was absolutely heroic. Deserving of, of a win and just robbed at the end. It was absolutely heroic defending in that second half with just nine men on the pitch. What did you make of that one, Rob? Uh, oh, it, it was one of them where it was... It was so disappointing the result, but the performance and everything we gave was was fantastic. Now, you know, I've, I've got a friend in professional football who's a professional referee, and I've sent him both incidents. Um, he said it was very harsh on the first one uh, when Chaz has brought the lad down because has had an adequate room to cover, but he said in the heat of the moment, you know, the referee's just fixated on the ball. Um, Josh's incident. Um, He's made the ref make a decision. That's probably the politest way of putting it. Um, but at that point, you know, I spoke to Josh, and at that point, he shouldn't have made the ref make any decision. And, and he knows that. He's a big enough lad to put his hands up. He apologised at the end. 
Um, but what it showed me is it just showed that I think we're better at, with home fans behind us. I felt like every fan blocked them shots. Every fan headed a ball. The, the drive and desire it gave the players was everything. And uh, as a manager, when you've got lads putting bodies on the line and blocking shots and clearing it, you want them to get them points. And I just felt like we held on to the very last minute. And it was the, the only real chance where the kid has hit it so well, bottom corner and there, everything else we dealt with. And it was disappointing the result, but, you know, Hansworth, again, it's not a credit to them. They're a good team. They're going to be up there. Um, and if we can defend like that with nine men, the expectation to do it with 11 men should be better. Um, so I was pleased, really. It was disappointing the result, but, again, I couldn't fault the lads, everybody. The clubhouse, it felt like a win as well. There's certain games where you draw, and it, it generally felt like a win, um, despite conceding late on. Any other comments on that game? Well, as... As a chairman, as a manager, as a fan, um, all you want to do is come and watch the game and watch the lads put 110% in it. And we certainly saw the, the, the lads putting in 110% on that game. Uh, it was, like I said, it was the first game. It was a bit of a shock of a crowd to be a fair. I'm sure it was over a, a 200, 220 odd, um, yeah. I believe. And um, it, you know the fans saw 110 percent commitment from from that whole side, and that's all we that's all we want to ask for. Football's a funny game because you know you can have a penalty decision to go go against you, hit the post, keeper has a blind or what what whatever it may be. But if you put 110 percent effort in every game, you're going to win more than then you lose. Simple as that. And speaking of attendances, you must be um, delighted with the numbers coming through the gate. We've still got the highest um, average attendance in the league. Well, you've got to run this club uh, as a business. And that's what I wanted to do when I first came in. And uh, um, as a business, if you get growth, that's all you go in business for. And, and, and it's the same with the, with the club. And over the last few a few years, the growth of the fan base and, and like you said, the, the, the attendance is, is everybody who's involved behind the scenes, and, you know, including the players and the, the a, a manager. I mean, it's a massive boost. It's a massive boost because it's like Rob said, um, we, we've even got, we've even got singing <laughs> now, uh, you know, the, you know, and, and it's great. Uh, I, I mean, I know we're going to probably talk about, about it, but. I think the Stabley game recently was the first game I've ever actually had echoes actually down my back of being at a home game because the atmosphere was absolutely superb. And and the players thrive on, on, on that. They really do. And so do we behind the scenes because we, you know, we do all this free of charge. You know, we're all volunteers it, it, and, you know, you, 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 you know, all the hard, hard work is is worth it when when you see that. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. I love it. Here's the highlights from Barton Town against Hansworth. Comes in now. Oh, good serve, Charlie Dixon. Yeah, that would have been an own goal, I think. Yeah, yeah I think so, yeah. Uh, no, a shot coming in there from Carl Jordan, but... Uh, well wide. Yeah, and a goal kick to Barton there. Yeah, Marley Grant made a noose to himself there and forced the ball to go all the way back. Baker, Hare, cuts inside. A little bit of a run here. Lays it off to Hinchliff. Unlucky. Playing it through, I think, for Luke Anderson there, but yeah. ball went one way and Anderson had gone the other. About 25 yards out. Probably, uh, I say, difficult to judge when you're at the far end from the action. Barton take it quickly and across into the box. And a great strike. Oh, just miscued it and it goes out for a goal kick yeah. to Hansworth. Anyway, hair long, looking for Hinchliff. He reaches it. Hinchcliffe holds it up. Ball in. Oh, great interception. That was, that was a lovely cross, and that was a decent cross into the area. But Certain goal if he doesn't nick that, yeah, Phil. And Tate lines up the corner. Whips it in. Great header. Oh, just gone over. Good chance there. Lacey Hinchliffe, I think. 
And it's into Batty, I think, that. No, sorry, Batty, takes, Batty, yeah. Batty takes on three there and claims for a penalty and a shot from Barton and it's gone in! A lot of calamitous goal, that might have been an own goal off the keeper. Yeah, I'm not sure who actually got that one. And the keeper holds his hands up as he claims, but it's a goal to Barton. Yeah, not sure who got that one, it was... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, nice to see Barton getting some luck in the uh, opposition goal now after... And it's out on the right hand side for Barton with Sam Weston. He plays it into Batty, I think. Oh, shot by Batty, but yeah. straight into the keeper's hands. Unlucky there. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was a cross or a shot, but uh, again, it was actually played into the danger area. As Hayworth, Hayworth, uh, Hansworth give the ball away again this time. Foul on Barton, I think. Yeah, bring your level. Here we are with Tate on the right hand side. Tate does well. He's intercepted that chance for Tate to cross it, and it's in. Oh! Just cleared over the bar by Sam Weston, I think. Good turn there from Hansworth in the yeah, centre of the park. Space out here on the right for him. Grant, and he finds him. Grant on the right hand side, squares up Fisher. Little touch into the box, shooting opportunity. Oh, great save, Charlie Absolutely Dixon. Absolutely fabulous save from Dixon there. And it was the captain, Carl Jordan, with the yeah. shot. And Six yards out, and. Uh, he tried to place it, he could have, if he blasted it, Dixon wouldn't have had a chance, but he tried to place it and uh, fabulous save by Dixon there. And Especially up being a better team as well. And it's with Josh Batty on the edge of the area, he, he takes it past two and a third, lays it off and has a shot, oh, just wide from Batty. That was unlucky, good work, Create great run again from inside. Batty. Robbie starts centre midfield. Is that a bit too much? Yeah. Well, Dixon, uh, Greaves had to get out of his area to play that one. Ended up being a bit of a tricky one that for Greaves. Header away for hands yeah. off by the captain Andy Gascoigne. Oh, good. good Excellent shot. play. Hint fifth on this right hand side. Oh. Uh, just too much. Yeah, he was looking for uh, Josh Batty there, but just too far in front of him. Pressure here. What's the referee given here? He's given free it's a free kick, kick outside the area. Looks like it could be a red card here, Phil. It's not pointing to the spot, so. Free kick from outside. He's consulting his linesman here, I think, Phil. Uh, that, yeah, could be. Going to have a word with him. Is it Fisher, that one? I think so. I think in that position, it's... Uh, whether he's going to call him the last man or not, I don't know. As surprise, surprise, Jordan's at the referee here. Has he given a yellow card there? I'm still not sure he's actually showing anything at the moment. Not sure if you give the yellow card to Jordan there for protesting at the referee. He needs one because the players were told last season that they weren't to go and uh, harass the referees. He is clearly not. Oh, it's a red card. Red card. Yeah, last man. He's got to go off Fisher here. As Rob Watson will be devastated with that start. To the second he will, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a particularly dangerous position. And a little bit rash, so three minutes into the second half. Red card. I think it's Fisher walking off. Watson's going to have to get his thinking cap on here, Phil. Bit of a shuffle around. Bit, bit harsh that on Fisher. Oh, it's a penalty. It's a penalty here, Phil. Can't see who's taking it. Is it the number four? Number, number nine, is it? Oh, saved! Oh, he and he's given a, a great save by Dixon, and they parried it. Free kick on the halfway line, just about. He's looking left. Left it goes. Hinchcliffe wins it. Anderson has it. Nice jink into the box on his right hand. Good effort. Just out for a corner. Was unlucky. Fire and attempt to slow it down. 
tactics than it is with the goal kick. Left footed out to the right hand side. Left by Anderson. Anderson challenges again. Grant plays it in. Interception by Matthews. Referee gives a rather questionable free kick there. As the hands of the players surround the ref, as it looks like they're saying that uh, Josh Batty has left a foot in there. Again, I don't like this, Phil. No, it's not good. The, re the referee seeing the incident is given the free kick. I think it was a 50 50. And, oh, it's another red card for Barton. As Batty has to go here. Corner comes in. Good header. Hair. By, by Taron Hare again. Great game he's had tonight. His hands will have it here in the middle of the park. Out wide it goes to Austin. Ball into the box. Speculative effort, really. It's a scarce on it. Yeah, certainly hands will not create chances if the ball's not getting in that box, but the corner comes across now. Oh, great chance for hands up here. Is the I think that might have clipped the post. I think the um, I think it was number eight, Andy Gasker, and the captain. I think he headed it onto his own player and then on this right hand side with West, and he gets the ball in, punched away by Dixon. Oh, strike! By Dixon get a hand on that. No, again. The crowd are the players at the back half of the goal. None of them are movement. As it goes in, on oh, it's just gone over. Could be the right decision to shoot either way. It's, it's got a clear side to goal. There's a As partial goes, wall. He strikes it. Takes a ricochet. Oh, good save, Greaves. But here we go. Hands to a free kick on his right hand side. Looks like it for the full back again. Alfie Eagle lines it up on his left foot. Run. Charlie Dixon with the save again. <coughs> Two options here. Oh, well, however, this ends up, Alex. You can't do anything but give praise to Barton for the way they played tonight. Couldn't agree with you more, Phil, absolutely. As it goes towards Anderson on his left hand side, he heads it on. But again, no options really, as you would expect with just the nine men. And it's a substitute, takes his first touch, Ricky Paler. Looks like it's going at centre half. Ball into the box, out to this right hand side, and the touch. Great goal, disappointing. And then we're on to um, Ron to Nairsborough, where Josh Batty scores a wonder goal. And then there's the sending off of Tarrant there, which um, is probably one of the worst decisions I've ever seen in any football. Absolutely quite incredible, but a really good um, first half performance and I thought saw the game out really well. Yeah, I think it was the first time, again, we're, we're, we're lacking a lot of injuries still, um, but the, you know, the lads went and executed the game plan against a good Nairs for Saturday. Um, you know, we, we, take two, we get an early lead um, and then Josh Batty scores a goal and I think that's why you pay your money for sort of a striker like that. He sees his initiative, uh, manages to lob the keeper. He, the keeper's position and you won't even question it really it's just Batty had exposed it and scored a great goal and then Taz gets sent off I'm sat there thinking is there any chance of this game going our way um, you know any of again a very unlucky circumstance and with Chaz's I could see why with Batty's I know why with Taz's I had no idea why it was it was really frustrating uh, it's Taz's Taz is an emotional player. He's a, he's a big leader in our changing room. And I was disappointed for him because I felt like sometimes when a player gets sent off, you can you both kind of look at each other and you know why. With Taz, it just it was awful for him. Uh, and Taz's first thought was, I'm just going to be missing the next few games. Um, he, he, he was, you know, he was disappointed. He felt like he'd let the lads down and he hadn't. And then, you know, again, rise up 10 lads. Um, again, two banks of four pretty much. Um, and the lads defended against a Nairsborough side who I felt put more on us than Handsworth. They've got some bigger lads in there, some strong players. 
and we just you know we rode our luck we, we defended well again the crowd behind us is a huge huge boost like mark said the, the things behind the scenes it's not just the playing team that bring the fans in it's the, it's the experience that they get when they come in the ground uh, you know good food good beer good clubhouse um, the team is made up of local lads now and um, so there's there's a lot of family connections there and you know they come in the another big thing is people don't realize how good non-league is the football's good it's it's entertaining it's not always pretty to watch i admit but it's very entertaining uh, not always for a manager i'd like it to be a little bit simpler um but for a fan it's great um, it's like a real old school football league kind of vibe um in the terraces the fans singing i don't know who the swan army are but you know they ever see me come and say hello they're a massive boost it's great the lads love it i just wish we score a few more goals at that end uh, and obviously it's stably we did but grant uh, decided to run to the dugout when he probably should have jumped in the crowd um but no it, it was a good game it was um it was good to get three points on the board and it gave us a platform to progress and it was still weird the weak inside with a few injuries any other comments on Nesbra? That is scoring a wonder goal, isn't it? That's that's what he does best. Um, and then obviously, I think we lost him after that game, so that was a big miss for him to score two goals for us and then go off for three games. But yeah, and yeah, like Rob says, Nesbra came at us and we held strong again. Just shows how good our defenders are. Now for the action between Barton Town and Nesbra Town. For Nesbra's circle. Circle. Plays it off to his left hand side. And that's played forward by Lonergan. Down the left hand side towards uh, Dugdale. Gets the ball across, miss hit by Fisher. Comes to Parker, drives it in. But uh, not the best of crosses. And that's early stages. Fisher sends it towards the left hand side. Matthews. Matthews with a good cross in. And hit on the first time by Lacey. And Matthews with the throw for Barton on the left. Throws it long towards Anderson. Powis gets his head in. And that's played through. And here's um, Parker going in on goal. Harris going in on goal. Cuts inside. Hits the shot. And that's a great block by Taron Hare. Throws it in field to Taron Hare. Hare, the captain, sends it to Lacey on the right. Lacey sends a long ball into the box. Tate rises, head it as a cross, and Batty finishes it off, and that's a great goal for Barton. Great crossfield ball by Josh Lacey. Grant Tate headed it across goal, and jo and Batty finishes it off. So Barton lead one 0 here. Greg Anderson with the free kick for Nesbrit. Followed clear by Taron Hare. Anderson lays it off to the right. Milson heads it forward though. Hare again gets head on it. Ball's clipped forward towards Carr. He's taking that down really nicely. Carr. Good ball in and Dixon, and Dixon claims well. Sends it forward. Nicely cut out by Lacey. Tate in field to Pete. Pete clips the ball forward. And Matthews checked closing in on that, but uh, Stevens Neal had to be alert to get there. Good run from Scott Matthews, nice ball from Nathan Pete. Powis now has it for Nairsborough, finds Anderson, experienced centre back. Pete picks it up, but uh, Nairsborough win it back. Ball's played to Carr on the right, got Walker outside him, Carr cuts in field, Carr still going. Plays a nice ball in, it's good defending by Taron Hare. Throw to Nesbro on the right. Thrown in by Powis, clip forward by Ferkel. Pete defends, plays a good long ball forward. Batty hits it on the volley and what a terrific goal by Josh Batty. Hit it on the volley, beat the keeper. And as Barry Davis would say, that's just magnificent. What a fantastic goal by Josh Batty. Good long ball from Nathan Pete, and Batty lashed onto it, hit it on the volley with the outside of his foot, and it curled in, and Barton lead 2-0. Dixon with a free kick. 
ball comes to the right hand side Anderson plays it in field hit first time and that's a fine save and the second follow up save real good save by the keeper Batty hit it well Anderson then got the follow up great piece of goalkeeping by Stevens Neal so Matthews with the corner Hinchcliffe waits on the edge of the box Matthews sends it in towering header away by Greg Anderson Tate can retrieve it though Tate sends it back in Lenahan this time with the header comes to Harris takes it down nicely good defending from Nathan Pete who came in there to win, win a vital tackle Nesbury come away for it though start does well Pete again great defending Nathan Pete and even wins the even wins the throw Pete does well and takes it off him Pete sends it down the line looking for the run of Anderson Anderson's done well to get there Anderson then cuts in field tries a shot it's blocked and Powers can clear his lines appeal for a penalty but uh, shouldn't be getting those really there's no chance for the defender to get out the way gets away from Batty and sends it down the left hand side space here for Milson Milson good defending by Hare Batty then can pick it up Batty finds Anderson good combination nice ball back from Anderson to Batty Batty then closing in on goal hits the shot and it's right across the face of the goal so Thurkle with the free kick driven into the edge of the box that's a good looping header it comes back off the crossbar and Robbie Stark clears it Lenigan's header there coming back off the bar Greg Anderson then gets a vital interception as Vati, Vati nearly um, sets Anderson clear ball sent across again and a good piece of defending once more at the back for for Barton back coming forward plays it for Doug Dale Doug Dale then in a bit of space here that's good play tucks it back in ball comes across and good defending on the near post by Barton it's behind for a corner Good break down the left hand side by Nairsborough. Carr swings it in. Batty wins it on the edge of the area. Really good ball to find Anderson. Plays it back to Tate. Tate sends it forward looking for Batty. Defended by Powers, and that's going to go behind for a corner to Barton. Good, really good break out there from the corner. So Tate with the corner. In it comes, headed away at the near post for Nesbrook. And they break down the left. Is this a good break by Nesbrook? It's still going. Ball's going to come across to Parks. Parks and oh, he's knocked it wide. That was an absolute sitter. Made a great break out, Parks, and it looked as if it was just a question of side footing it in. And he side footed it wide. Fisher. Ball's clipped forward towards Carr. Carr. Hare gets it's away from Hare, and a fine save from Charlie Dixon. Hare probably just got a slight touch on there just to. Uh, Old car up, but what's the referee doing here? It's a terrific save by Charlie Dixon. Car went clear. Got his shot away. Dixon saved well. But what's the referee going to do here? And he looks if he sent Taron Hare off. Well, that's uh, astonishing. First of all, the how's he stopped a goal-scoring opportunity? The striker got clear and was clear in the penalty space in the penalty area. Got a clear strike on goal. We've now got a free kick in a great position for Nairsborough. So, so free kick though for Nairsborough in a great position. This is a great chance to get back in it. Barton down to 10 men. Dugdale and Thurkle over it. In comes a free kick. That's a great save by Dixon. And the follow up and another fine save by Dixon. Plenty of space now for Greg Anderson, veteran centre half, comes to halfway, knocks it short, 
And another good save on Dixon, who was at the feet of uh, Walker. It's now on the floor, Dixon steps back, a few paces, runs forward, left footed over the halfway line, Towards looking for Tate. Done well there, Tate. He might just manage Lee to keep Milson. this one in. Tate has it on the right, drives a good ball across, Anderson gets the header, good defending by Greg Anderson. Looking for Anderson, he couldn't quite get a directed header on that one. Lenahan comes forward, drives the ball to the right hand side towards uh, Carr. Carr cuts in field. Looked to take a bit of a dive to me, but the referee said it's a free kick. Circles over it. And I would think Dugdale also over it for a left footed option. I think Circle looks as if he's going lining this one up. Taken by Dugdale, and that was a good, didn't miss that left hand post by much. I thought for a minute it was going in actually. Yeah, I don't think um, Charlie Dixon looks as if he was going to get it. Ball's laid back to uh, Milson, cuts in field. Thurwell, That's unfortunate, Josh Lacey went one way and uh, the ball went the other. Sent to Carr on the right, just up from the corner flag. Carr approaches the te penalty area. Matthews against him, lays it back to Powis. Powis sends it in. Again, that's strong defending. Stark gets a touch, Pete. Against Harris, Harris on the turn, hits the post. Coming up to the hour mark. Clip forward Pete towards Tate. Three King. Good little flick on by Tate for Batty. Batty inside the area, drives it in. And a great save. Great save by Stevens Neal. Yeah, excellent save there from Stevens Neal. Batty Terrific. close to his hat trick. Yeah. Not sensible play by the Nairsman substitute there. Yeah. Doesn't make 10 yards and the referee has to count it out for them. Waste time. Matthews drives it low. Anderson tried to get oh. a flick on. Defended by Lennon. That was unlucky. It uh, bounced onto Anderson and could have gone anywhere. Is it out to the right by Robbie Stark? A great interception up. by Robbie Stark. Good tackle back by Powers, but Matthews now comes forward. Scott Matthews still going. Plays it in feed, finds it just too far ahead for Batty. Anderson drives it down the right hand side. Matthews though can pick it up. Scott Matthews coming forward. He's on his own, he's going all the way. Scott Matthews. Scott Matthews into the penalty area. Oh, and drives it just past the left hand post. Past the post. This will swing out from goal, but he'll no doubt put it deep towards Dixon in the far post. Dugdale clips Does it so. in. Oh, it's over Dixon's head, comes to and and Lenahan at the far post, kicked off the line, followed back in. Tremendous another great block. save. Oh, another defensive great block. save. Josh Lacey, incredible. Circle. Cuts inside, but uh, still about 40 yards from goal. Tries to play the ball forward, does so. Great block, Scott Another Matthews. shot blocked, another shot Good blocked. Block again. Dixon down to save. And on to um, Hathersley, very good 4-2 win. I think my memory from that game was um, Scott Matthews absolutely torturing them down the left-hand side and having a great game. Yeah, um, Barnsley on a Tuesday night is, is not somewhere you always want to go. Uh, Aversley are a very tough team. Uh, you know, I, I felt for Aversley, um, they made it really hard work. Out of all the games you looked at so far this season, that was one of the hardest. You know, teams will you know teams will struggle when they go there, especially on a Tuesday night. Um, and I felt that the performance we it, it was up and down. We had some really good spells, and then then we lowered it. We got caught on the counter attack too too quickly, and probably committing too many bodies forward because we went into it thinking we're going to smash these, and that's the wrong attitude to have really when you're going into a, a game like that. And I'm glad he's been mentioned now. Uh, I was going to mention him, but you know Scott Matthews. Before this game, I think week in, week out, he was there wasn't a right back that had dealt with him yet. And again, it was the same in this circumstance. And I just can't believe he missed that penalty. I don't think he believes it yet. <laughs> um, but then he made up for it, uh, you know, about 25 yards out. And he decides to put a free kick in, but he can't do it from 12 yards for some reason. But it was a good game. It, I just felt like once we got that equaliser, we would have, we would, you know, we was going to go on and win it. And again, it was with a weakened side. We had uh, Josh Eccles who was poorly, 
we had a few players missing again. We had uh, three of the reserve lads on the pitch and we got Kieran Mortimer in for that uh, short amount of time. So to go there with a weakened side and win is great. I'd have took a 1-0 or 5-0. It didn't bother me. I just wanted to get three points on the board. But no, I was really pleased with the lads. It was a good performance. I was just saying we had a few we had a few players go off injured in that game as well, which uh, yeah, yeah. sort of stretched things a bit many. too. There's been that many. We lost um, Ben Inchcliffe rolled his ankle. Um, who else came off in that game? Um, I think I think Kieran came off, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Kieran had a bang on his head as well. Yeah, Kieran come off as yeah. well. So again, it was and the reserve lads came on. So I think Bryn came on at right back and did really well. Uh, and then Kieran come on for a spell as well and again did really well and that's credit to Liam and his lads and just on that you know for all the lads in the reserves that haven't played for the first team it's been well noted that they've been at the first team games and that's another massive added boost I know me and me and Liam when we first spoke when we come into the job we wanted to build that we know that we, we know that there's a number of players in the reserves that are happy in the reserves and there's a couple of lads in there that want to push the first team but the togetherness of both squads is something we want to build, uh, regardless of if it's on or off the pitch. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree that the first team and the reserves should work, you know, close. And uh, that's what we've got, got the, the reserves for. Um, and Liam and the reserves side, of, you know, you know are, are, are a good asset for the club and a good asset for uh, the first team, team as well. On that game, it was great to see some of them young lads and uh, some of the reserve lads they come on and play you know for me it was gonna, you know I was thinking it was going to be one of them games where we out a, a player and we'll be so un- a lucky but you know that wasn't the case and um, yeah Scott Scott Matthews especially that game Jesus he, you know played really really well really well you should know Rob we don't score penalties at Barton Town yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> they beat <laughs> us he might argue that. Is there a better left wing back in the league than Scott Matthews? I'd say the league above as well. Um, mm. I've experience of that. I, you know, I've, I've come across a lot of left back, left sided players, and Scott's well up there. Um, I'd hate to play against him. That's something that most players would say. He's he's powerful. He's direct. He's got a sweet left foot. But also, you know, on the flip side of that, what complements him quite well is Robbie Starts' role in that. Um, Robbie Starts played in that, you know, the side of the diamond, or just inside. And for for a manager, it's it's really vital that you can have balance in your squad, so you can have left-sided players on the left-hand side. It just gives you an opportunity to play your system much better. But now he's been excellent. Off to the seaside at Bridlington. Yeah. So Br- Bridlington for me, uh, it's credit to Brett. I think this is one of the best Bridlington sides he's put together in a long time. Uh, it, it's always a very very tough place to go. Um, again, we was weak. It's not an excuse. We had some players missing. Luke Anderson at half-time actually should have come off. Um, he was struggling with an injury. Dizza, Dizza had to work early that morning, which was another loss. Um, we still had Matt Plummer, um, who was struggling. Um, who else did we have missing in that game? And then Batty and Taz were suspended, um, which are big key players. And obviously the long-term one was no. Um, key players that you want playing in your squad and to come up against Bridlington and I, I did feel, I felt Bridlington look, they did have a number of chances but you know we, we had to defend them chances and we did that well and I felt if Matt Plummer had just scored that goal at the end, a, a point would have been nice, I'm not, I think you know the way the game went on we could have won it, we could have got battered, it was as simple as that, it was two good teams end to end trying to win a game and um, Bridlington's a tough place to go they've got some very good players a few of their lads I wouldn't expect to be there next season uh, unless Bridlington went up but it was unfortunate I felt the point would have been nice Any other thoughts on Bridlington? Uh, yeah um, it could have gone either way uh, it was one of them games where I, I, you know, I actually walked away happy even, even though we were lost because you know N could have played that game ten times and yeah Brid could have won it five times. We could have won it five times. Could have drawn five times. So yeah, it was just one of, one of them games. Games and uh, like Rob said, if that mighty chance went in, we should count that. I believe it didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, it, yeah, it, you know, I, I think a two-two would have been the, the right the, the right score on, on that day. And then on to uh, Tuesday night in Garforth, um, and it 
a linesman's flag. It could have been a point if we went for that linesman's flag, which would have been an excellent result. Uh, again, it, it, you know, uh, it, it's credit to the lads. I know we're talking about a lot of games, but we were doing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. And for me, Tuesday, Saturday is okay because you, you do get time to recover. But Saturday to Tuesday after playing Bridlington is difficult. So we had Luke Anderson that was struggling. Um, we had uh, obviously Grant have to play up front. Um, because we had batting suspended. Matt Plummer come back into the squad, I thought was excellent. Um, we had uh, another a couple of players missing as well. And and Garforth were on an unbeaten run. And I, I thought we, we took the game to them. We, we conceded from a corner. It was four, really. Uh, we just lost his man. He's a big lad. He scored an header. And then barring that, we had a number of chances. But again, at half-time, I've had to make a sub because... Josh Eccles got injured. I felt for Josh. He, he'd done well in that game so far. We had uh, Tad Dixon, uh, Kean and Bryn on the bench again. Tad came on and I've always been a big fan of Tad. Um, he came on, he, he looked like a first team player, if I'm honest. And that's, you know, that's credit to all the young lads in the reserves who've come on. But I thought Tad come on and was excellent. I just felt that we had that chance where Scott Matthews fluffed the only cross I've seen him fluff all season. Ben Inchcliff, again, it was, I've looked back at it and it's very, very harsh offside. Um, I just felt the way the game went, it would have been deserved. I felt that second half, we were the better team. We were playing a lot better football. We were getting on the ball. Uh, we were creating, we weren't creating clear-cut chances, but we were getting the ball in the right areas. And I always felt that there was a chance coming and we got it. And it was offside, unfortunately. Um, but well, then right at the end, when you go in for the game, Charlie Dixon comes big again uh, and keeps it at 1-0. Um, you know, I spoke to the Garpeth manager at the end, who's a very experienced non-league manager, and he said that was very tough for them. And to beat a team's unbeaten record is tough. But I just felt, again, it was Garpeth at their best time against Barton at week time. And, you know, I'd like to play these teams again when I can't argue that I've got players missing. And your other thoughts on Garpeth? That was just probably the best save I've ever seen from Charlie Dixon um, in the league. It was just I don't know how he's how he's kept it out. Um, I think they had like that. Apart from that chance, they had the goal and that was it. I think we were a much better team. Um, we just didn't quite find that chance, and when we did, I don't know if it was offside, but the, the linesman did. So that's all that matters. Yeah, we should have won that. We were the best side all all night. We should have won that game. Definitely. Uh, I don't know if I remember. I think Ben Inchcliffe I had a chance right at the, in the first the first half. He had a one on one with the, with the keeper, and I, if that would have gone in, I think it would have been a different game. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Josh Eccles did as well. He, I think he kicked his own foot in the end, but yeah. you know, he, yeah. I thought he was going to score it. Now the action from Garforth Town against Barton Town. Pictures from Garforth Town TV. <laughs>
And that brings finally an end to the proceedings for tonight. There's a score gap of Town 1, scored by uh, Jamie Barkaway, Bound Town 0. We then come to uh, uh, Bottesford at home, and I was just looking quickly at the attendance 298 for this one. Was another good performance and well deserved 2 1 win. Yeah, I thought I thought with Botsford, um, I actually thought that the first team that we played against this season that played some really good football against us and made us run about a little bit. And you know, it's credit to what Jimmy and uh, Paul Allen have done there. They've got a young squad. Uh, they go into games with no fear, really, and, and they certainly didn't fear us at the time. Um, the one thing for me about that was I said to the lads, sometimes we're going to win games not playing brilliantly, and that was one of them. Uh, I did feel we, we did play some really good football. We had a number of chances. I just didn't feel it was as flowing as some of the previous games that we'd actually lost. Um, you know, and in that game as well, the big thing for me was the crowd. And yeah, a lot of them would have been Botsford as well as Barton, but it was excellent. The atmosphere, right? some of the banter I got behind the behind the dugout was good, and it's all in good favour, you know. And at the end of the game, um, you know, speaking to them Bottesford fans, and it was, it was good. You know, they were very polite and complimentary about him uh, and what we're doing at the club, and that's the experience that the club have put together. It, you know, like I said, what Mark and the committee do behind the scenes, to make sure that happens. Um, and, and you know, when we go to Bottesford, I'm sure it'll be replicated. Um, actually, for the game, the big thing for me was, it not been harsh, and it'll it, it, forgive me for saying it, but. Ben Inchcliffe finally turned up. Um, you know, me and Ben had had a, I won't say a rocky relationship, but I wanted the best out of him. And he came into the season just not himself, and for a number of reasons why. Uh, I spoke to Ben at length, um, you know, tried to pick him up, pick his confidence up. And I felt that was our, our moment that we'd, we'd been waiting for together. Uh, it was two people fighting the same cause. We got there, and he deserved his two goals, and the look on his face was brilliant. Uh, it really meant something to me that I had the persistence to, to work with him and he had the persistence to believe in me. And, you know, hopefully when Ben comes back into the squad, uh, he can build on that. And uh, Bottesford's girl from Jack Siddle, who's obviously now at Barton. What's, what does um, Jack Siddle bring to the Barton squad? Um, Jack, Jack, obviously, I've known Jack for a while now. He's been at Clips and he's, um, he's a direct player. So when Jack gets it, his first thought is, I'm going to run at players. Um, and that's what I feel that, you know, we need a little bit more of. Sometimes we've got players like Dizzer and Nate P who will collect the ball, find a pass. I just felt when you've got people like Robbie, you've got people like Scott, you've got people like Noel, Jack, Lacey, you can drive at players. Grant, it just gives you more armour to your squad. And the way this season went with all the injuries and stuff like that with COVID, you can lose a player for 10 days without even knowing about it. Um, you need a good squad, and Jack's a local lad, and I felt that he was a signing we should have got. And that was Nath Pete as well who pushed it. You know, Nath had said, you know, I think he's a good signing, and we went and got him. And that's credit to Mark, who, who, who backs us in, in that respect. You know, I, one thing I've, I've always had with Mark, it's a very good relationship. It's, it's never been no, but he wants to know. Uh, and that's how we'll build moving forward. Uh, and that's the best way for me because I feel that my decision is justified and we go into it with the same expectations. Uh, and I'd want that from you know any chairman and Mark would want that from any manager. Any other thoughts on Bottesford? I don't know. I didn't see any of the game because it was that a, a busy. Because <laughs> 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 um, you know, it's like Rob Rob said, 298 now. You know, most of the backroom, you know, the staff were just running around uh, trying to keep uh, everything, you know, running smoothly. So um, yeah, um, but yeah, I was happy on the on the day. It definitely with obviously the support, the result. Um, so happy days. Here's the Barton Town against Bottesford Town action. Left hand side. It just goes out of the uh, number eight, Siddle. That's a good turn by Batty. Drives the ball to the right where there's space for Lacey. Lacey. Barton using the full width of the pitch. Plummer. Plays it with the outside of his foot down to Lacey. Lacey gets a good ball across. Muscle White's fist punches it away. Comes to Matthews who drives it in and that's well blocked. 
It's going to break to Siddle. Yeah, good shot there from Matthews. It was. Powerful. In good and tackle play it from back Pete. Winter. Good play from Pete down the left. Clips it forward looking for the runner Batty. Batty has it now approaching the penalty area. Batty holds it up nicely, lays it off and hit first time by Hinchcliffe but wide. Really good break by it, Barton. It there. was a good move that. Bottisford with the throw, right hand side for them, left hand for Barton. That's over Matthews' head. Good tackle back so by Matthews. Recovers and gets a tackle in. Ball goes off him for a corner. Corner to Bottisford. Great challenge on Siddle. Quickly taken corner by Bottisford. Short wants a great yeah, ball in and a great piece of defending by Pete. They've moved further away now. Varley's come up. It's uh, gone for Tate. It's good flick back by header. Tate. Another back header. Breaks for Hinchcliffe. Good ball. Plenty of space for Matthews on the left hand side. He heads it forward. He's level with the edge of the penalty area now. Matthews drives a great ball across, which is well yeah, headed clear by Spencer. Matthews again. Matthews. Going towards the byline, again clips the ball across, did that get a deflection? It did, it's a Barton corner, more good play down that left hand side. Yeah, some good work from Barton here. <laughs> Creating Grant. opportunities or half chances. Grant Tate's going to take the corner from the left hand side. Plenty up from the back for Barton. Tate sends it in. It's well taken by Muscle White. Yeah, there's some pressure there, but he did well. Yeah, good piece of goalkeeping. Full height. Arms extended to take it. He now kicks long. Matthews underneath it. Picked up by Hudson. Hudson. That's a good ball. Hudson now has a great chance to get a good cross in from the right. Sends a really good ball. It's well defended by Fisher. And it's headed into the side netting by Maloney when it came back out. Lacey now with the throw. Little bit of movement for him up front. That's Valley who laid that one off, but ball's picked up by Bottisford. Ted, it head defends by well. Hare. Plumber halfway line on the touch line. It's picked up by Batty. Turns well and it's blocked. Clipped in by Lacey. Good header and it's saved. Hinchcliffe's header. Much in the way of chances. Barton have probably had the the best two. Pete finds Plummer. Plummer going forward into midfield. Still going Plummer. That's nice play. Comes now to Hinchcliffe who plays it into the back of the net and Barton have the lead. Really good piece of football. Good run by Hinchcliffe and by uh, Plummer and Hinchcliffe finished it nicely. I think the response to the Barton play showed how much they've enjoyed that one. And Plays it to his left to Pete. Pete back to Dixon. Dixon drives it forward to uh, Batty's head. Headed forward towards Siddle low for Wattersford. Cranage, Jones. Picked up by Fisher. Barton have it with Batty on the left. Yeah, finally did reach Batty. Batty saves it in, in field to Tate. Tate, good ball to Batty, drives it across. Matthews drives in as well, blocked, and it's going to drop in Muscle White's hands. Yeah. Good effort from straight, Matthews. Yeah, straight up in the air off the defender. Jones. Two minutes plus to half time, won't be much added time. We've not had any Jones physios on. Good four forward, which uh, that's a good finish. That. Nice side netting. Came to um, Maloney. Johnson, hit it first time, looked as if it was going in, lobbed it over good Dixon, and it's there. found the side netting. Now with O'Sullivan um, in the centre circle, plays a good ball down the right hand side towards Cranage, who's on to it, sends it in, good save by Dixon, picked up again, great block, Ellender under pressure from Fisher, nice bit of play though, driven forward by Ellender, Jones lays it off, Fisher picks it up, Done well there, Fisher finds Matthews, Matthews coming forward, cutting in from the left, still going, Matthews hits the shot, it's blocked, Barton corner. Tries to get the shot in, but uh, deflected for a corner. 
Yeah, I'm not sure it was going on target, but it got that deflection. Tate will take the corner from Jones the left. Telling his uh, team to calm down a little bit. Tate with the corner. Curls in overhead, a good fist from Muscle White. Can't can't really be any complaints on that one, Richard. No, no, two yellow cards so far been fair enough. Muscle White sends it forward, Plummer's under it. Jones gets the head on it though, it breaks to Hare. Hare got in a bit of a mess there against uh, Maloney, and Maloney wins a corner for Bottesford. Ellender's going short. Now Maloney steps away, leave it for Ellender to take. It's going to be Mason Ellender to take this one. Could go short, but Maloney decides to walk away instead. Ellender will get this one into the penalty area. It's a good ball in, good header. And it's 1-1. One, one. It was a good header by... Um, right. Ball with Liam Wright. Touch line, right hand side, box long. Pete's header. Pete underneath that. Flicked on by uh, uh, Tate. Batty. Lacey now coming up from in from the right hand side, edge into the penalty area. Nice play, it's caught there, Lacey, right on the edge of the penalty area. Barton free kick, great position for a free kick. Just on the right of the penalty area. So Matthews free kick right on the corner, just outside Two the penalty man area. Two-man wall, but is at an angle. That is being pernickety, Richard. I think he's made Scott Matthews move the ball about a foot. Yeah, Matthews drives it in low, punched by Muscle White and hacked clear by Jones before Plummer could get to it. Tate, Tate clips it back in, volleyed clear by Cranage. Near the corner flag, ball comes across, Plummer intercepts, Lacey comes away with it. Looks it forward to Batty. Oh, nice four. And lucky there, that flick by Batty to free Anderson. So Matthews will take the free kick from the left hand side. <laughs> Just in from the touchline. That's got Matthews left hand side for Barton. Just inside the Bottisford half. Free kick. Touchline. Driven in towards Hare. Good header from Taron Hare. Jones heads it out. It's going to drop to Batty who drives it in. But easy for Muscle White. Dixon drives it down the left. Looking for Anderson. Anderson's got him behind here. Anderson tried to take it first time but lofted it over the yeah, bar. Anderson did well there. Got in front of the... Managed to get himself past and then in front of the defender. But too much on the ball. Cliff. Sullivan clears. Spencer sends it forward. Hare can head it back. Free header for Sullivan. Plummer brings it down in the centre circle. Does well. Plummer plays a nice ball to Batty. Cuts in field. Good tap. Uh, comes to Plummer. Lays it off to Matthews. Can send it across the goal. Turn in by Hinchcliffe. And Barton 2 1. Really excellent goal by Barton. Turn in by Hinchcliffe. So free kick is about to come in, clipped in centrally, Plummer great defensive header, ball still scrambling in the box and hack clear by hammered away. That will do by for Anderson Barton. in fact. And next it's um, away to Eccles Hill, a lot more convincing than the 2-1 score would suggest I, I would say. Yeah, again, Bradford on a Tuesday night, um, it's never easy to go. You know, the, the travelling that the lads have to do on a Tuesday night, you've got to remember that. And it's the same for the, you know, it's the same for the home team. These lads are working nine to five or seven to three, getting up early or going home, look, you know, getting the kids' knees on and then getting in a car and travelling an hour and a half for a game of football. And that, that's testing. 
uh, it's easy for me as a manager because I have to just stand in the dugout. But for you know, from playing, it's it's not easy at all. Um, you have to quickly switch from work mode to football mode, and your body needs to get ready and prepared. You usually find that you're you're eating in the car or you're drinking in the car, and you know, for me, you take any win on a Tuesday night, don't matter how it is. And Eccleshill was a tough game. It's I, I just felt that we should have put it to bed a little bit easier. You know, we. It, we had a number of chances in that game. Luke had a chance. Ben Inchcliffe had a chance. We hit the bar. Uh, Batty had a chance. Uh, he put one over. I just thought that game could have been 4-5-1, but we made it into 2-1. And their goal, they had a lot of spells of possession at time, but sometimes possession, is, it can be to your credit. You can let them have the ball. If they're not a threat, it's not a problem. If you're 2 a up, let them have it. We'll wait for our opportunity. A lot of our chances came on the counter attack. And then the score from a corner, which, you know, the lad's a big lad. It's a great ball in. It was a 50-50 and he's got the end of it. But barring that, I never felt that they were going to score. And that's not discredit to record girl. I just felt on the night we were solid. We all have our different, we all have our different opinions. Uh, my opinion on, on that game is that we, we hold on to that 2-1. It was one of them nights where we grounded out a 2-1 victory, victory, where, you know, we'll take that. I thought Egg Eckersfield, I thought there was, my personal opinion, I thought they were the better side uh, on that particular Eckley day. But it's like Rob said, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, we looked tired, you know, and uh, it was a good victory. It was a, it was an important victory, a victory. That was that's just my my opinion. Um, but I have to say the cheeseburgers from from, from there are gorgeous. <laughs> one one they're having. Well, I think you went about three of them before the game even started. <laughs> I think it was three of them. I think. Well, we didn't yeah. get food after that game, so I'm a bit disappointed, but. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the floodlights weren't very good though were they what's that sorry the floodlights weren't very good it oh. seemed very dull nah, I've still got Fatty complaining about that and in all fairness I think I didn't want to agree with him but I did <laughs> <laughs> the ball come across and he, he generally didn't see it I believe him um, when I was in the warm up with the lads I even said the lights are awful but you know that's the best thing that you've got to deal with at this level I don't know how them them lights pass. Um, <laughs> they looks at, especially in that that at goal mouth. Yeah. At one at, at one stage, the keeper had to light a, light a candle. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Unbelievable. And then we come to the game against Stavely, which was a without doubt a fantastic advert for non-league football. Really good game, and what a fantastic finish! Like you well, say, the atmosphere was incredible. Well, for me, that was, you know, like Mark said, it, it gave me goosebumps. You know, you get those moments in football where it all makes sense why you do it. Why do you put yourself through the stress? Why do you bother, you know, turning up week in, week out? And it's them moments that make you do it. It's them little moments in the game where it's like a drug. You're addicted to it. Uh, it's fantastic. And for me, you know, I've known Brett Marshall for a while and Brett's a really, really good guy. He, he's great spoken. and he's down to earth. He's very experienced at this level and there's no there's no surprise his teams do well each year. And if it wasn't for COVID and the season last season, then they were due on to go up promoted. Um, you know, Adam Lund is a lad they had last season who was a centre half at Barnsley. Uh, to get that calibre of player in and and, and Brett's unfortunate that he's gone to Alfreton. It's not just one league up, he's gone two or three leagues up. And that's it, you know, it's credit to Stavely. So for me, if someone had said at the start of the game, would you have taken a point? I can't say I wouldn't. Um, I'd have liked to have got all three points, but there are games where you could go either way. Like you guys said, it was two good footballing teams trying to win. It was two boxers trying to fight it out. No one playing safe. And for me as a manager, I want that. You know, I want us to defend well and attack well. I don't want to be one of these teams who park the bus and wait for an opportunity. I want to go out to teams and take it to them. And with that, you would obviously go going in. But the, the goals they scored, you know, the lad, um, Reeves Bucock, who was on Doncaster's books, he was at Cleetown in pre-season. Very good player. And um, San Finlaw, who scored that worldly goal, which I looked at it back and my first thoughts were, could the lads have got to it? But is it that sweet and that quick? It was unsavable. And he's just gone to Stocksbridge. So that shows the calibre of their side. And then I bring Nathan and Grant on. Um, Big Pete comes in, he, he wins the corner, 
um, he wins the corner. He then scores the corner in his first thought, experienced lad, run and get the ball back. And I just felt it 2-1. It was one of them games where I felt like, you know what, I think we might win this. And, and then Grant, Grant scores that goal and it was like, it was probably my favourite moment of the season. I remember I turned around to Mark at 2-0 and he, it looked like I was going to quit and he was going to sack me. That's what it looked like. <laughs> and um, I, I just felt like it was very harsh the, the way the game had gone. But I then turned around to Mark when Grant uh, scored that goal and I, I honestly felt he was going to come on the pitch with us. Um, I had Aaron, Aaron trying to get water out with his camera and it was brilliant. It was like, the change of him was fantastic. It was, it was that good feeling and the reason why we do it at this level. And, and Grant, come on. Grant's attitude's been phenomenal. The reason he's been on the bench the past few games is just resting. He's new to this level. He's been playing well. He's worked hard. He had a, another injury. He had a, um, a hamstring strain and it was one of them where if I carried on playing him, I risk losing him. So I had to rest him. He's come on. He's the thing with Grant is he plays with no fear and that's what I love about him. You know, some players there would have been safe and carried the ball or passed the ball. He thought, nah, you know what, I can score here. He backs himself and that's what I love as a player. Uh, and credit to him, he scored that goal. Great feeling for him. Great feeling for the lads. It, it, you know, all the lads had celebrated in the pylon. There was JJ, there was Sid, there was me, Nate. And, you know, turn around the crowd's going wild. It, Felt like we had fifty thousand in there. It was brilliant. Yeah, with um, once they scored their second with only less than ten minutes to go, I thought the game was over at that point. Yeah. We thought well, there's no way we can get back into this. Well, I spoke to Paul, their uh, manager and assistant, at the end, and it, it, you know he's worked in football for a number of years. He went, you know what, mate? It was the best draw everyone could have asked for. He says, two good teams trying to play football. He says, we're disappointed, but we're not. He says, because we'd have took a point at the start of the game. He says, to put two goals is hard, but he says, you deserved it. He says, we deserved our two goals. You deserved your two goals. He said, it was a real good advert for football. Uh, and both teams will do well this season. And the weather was atrocious. It was horrendous. I think we've only just got dry now. Yeah. Did the, the pitch held up well though on that on that game, which was yeah. another pleasing pleasing thing because he did throw it down all game, um, and the pitch oh, held up really well. Yeah, it did, and you know, I, thought, I, I think sometimes we don't do it on purpose, but you take the pitch for granted. It's not we're not a professional team who's got ground staff on it every day. We know the volunteers work hard on it, and the pitch this season has it's been fantastic, the best it's been in in recent years, I believe. At Barn, I don't know if I'm saying the truth there, I'm only talking about when I've been there as an opposition manager or player, but for me as a manager, it's been, it's been great week in, week out, uh, and that's all we can ask for, really. Um, you know, for me, to have a good home ground, good changing room and good pitch gives you a platform for success. You know, you can't control what away teams do, but we can control what we do. Yeah, the home results are so important um, because of, you know, on that particular game, there's lots of new faces there. The crowd was great. And again, I, I, I personally don't think we deserve to be 2 nil down at that stage. I'm looking up at the other gods thinking, come on, yeah. help us out. Yeah, for God's sake, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, obviously, when Grant scored that, that goal, I, I'm looking up in the gods again saying, thank you so, so much <laughs> because, you know, we deserve that. Yeah. Uh, you know, two to thousand percent. I think Matt nearly knocked me out when he was celebrating the second goal. He <laughs> jumped in your shoulders. I think he punched me in the arm or something. And I think the camera's still got water in it now, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what, what a game it was for non league and Grant's goal. Christ, he, he only scores one of the goals, doesn't he? He doesn't score tappings. No, he doesn't, unfortunately. Now, the highlights from Barton Town against Stavely Miners Welfare. Just kept Doolan. in play. Doolan against Hare. Cuts inside. Plays, Plays a good ball the to the right. Across. Space here. Driven in. Dixon fists it away. Ball to left hand side to Langton. Langton. Disley against him. Plays a good ball inside. Looking for the run of Doolan. Back to Langton. Space on the wing here. And the there. ball comes. That's well defended by Charles Fisher. Disley completes the clearance. Lang back to him. Josh Batty. Batty hits it well, but straight at uh, Avery. Savely extend it forward towards Froggett. Fisher defends it, breaks to Langton. Nice touch from Langton, drives it, and Dixon gets well down and saves it well. Left. It's 
Gukok is after it. Good. Taron here gets back, but Gukok goes past him, cuts in field, drives it across. Great clearance by Josh Lacey. Fisher. Free kick to Barton. Quickly taken. Matthews. Matthews plays in field to Hinchcliffe. Nice little touch. Oh, son, look, and it comes back to Hinchcliffe, but good goalkeeping. Nice link up play by Barton. It was a good move, that. Probably the best so far. Just the heads on further. Ball still up in the air, Robbie Stark beaten. Good ball to Frog it, Lukok now. now. Against Lacey, drives it in. Dixon gets down and collects at the second attempt. Now with Disley. Disley. Ball comes, ball comes, in comes across. Cliff and the fist of Albury Olb turns it round for a Barton corner. Yeah, Albury was struggling a bit with that one. Disley with the corner. There's only one, been one real attempt on goal from either side. That was a Langton effort, well saved by Charlie Dixon. Disley's corner. That's played in. Oh, and cleared that was out. A much better for, uh, corner this time Excellent from Disley. Excellent corner that by Disley. Kin lobs it back forward. Hair under pressure as well. It comes to Varley on the right, on just about the short halfway. Varley infield to Hinchcliffe. Hinchcliffe did well, start. Disley plays the ball to the left hand side looking for Matthews, it's headed by Parkin. Math Matthews might pick it up though, he does. Just Matthews turns nicely, goes to the edge of the penalty area. It's well defended. Valley supporting well there. Ball sent across. And it comes to Hinchcliffe and it's just cleared out from in front of goal. Right. Valley. Plays it through for Matthews up from the touchline. Drives the ball across. Oh, and just touched away by the head before it reached Batty. Good piece of defending. It's going to drop to start. Start. Goes into the penalty area. Still going. Still going. And Albury's out to collect. Perhaps tried a little bit too much there. One player too many. And goalkeeper saw his opportunity to come out and dive at Robbie Start's feet. Collects the ball. Now got it on the floor, kicks down the right hand side, free kick for offside though, so I don't think Frogger will be too happy at being caught offside there, player of his experience. Short to start, start. Not a good ball from start though. Ball. Duggan, head miss kicks but recovers well, finds Varley. It's on the right hand side now with Plummer. Plummer's got some space to try and get a decent cross in. Sends it across over Hinchcliffe's head, doesn't reach Batty. Matthews though can pick it up. Matthews. It's got got to, Lacey on uh, the Lacey. outside. Lacey going forward. Good run by Josh Lacey. Gets a good ball across. It's defended well at the far post. Head of Hinchcliffe. That. I think that was Eads, was it? Was just headed up in the air. Fisher beaten. It's a good ball, great defensive header by Taron Hare. Comes out to uh, Finlaw. For Finlaw, but uh, Le must have took a deflection. So Dudley with the corner. And it comes, cleared on the near post. Sent again across, header by Varley. Away. Plummer tried to get on it. Plummer Book slips, off. trying to put in a challenge. Sends it in, not far over. And breaks out. Langton. Referee had a good view of that though. Frog it on the left. Wasn't impressed. Frog it sends the ball across, good piece of defending by... Uh, I think that's Fisher. In the Barton half. Still on the right hand side for the visitors. It's going to break here, runs. oh he's beaten, oh he's hit wide, well, that, that was, was a great chance. chance. <laughs> Headed by Plummer, reaches Varley, finds Hinchcliffe, Hinchcliffe plays good it. ball to Matthews. Matthews on the left, Matthews cutting inside, Matthews inside and out, Scott Matthews, edge of the area, drives it in, deflected for a corner, Craig Disley with the corner. In it comes over Hinchcliffe's head, it's headed by out by Dudley. Comes to Matthews. 
Matthews drives it in just wide. It wasn't too far wide, it was certainly worth having a go. Lacey back to Matthews. Matthews, Matthews good that's ball. a good ball. They start now on the left. Gets the ball across, defended by Hoff. Comes back to Matthews though. Matthews. Lacey behind him. Lacey. Start. Nice play from Barton. Back to Matthews. Start. It's now with uh, Varley. Hare drives the ball across Hinchcliffe's header. Just over the top. Flips the ball forward looking for Batty. It's well defended. Right, the pressure from Plummer. Defense is given. Plummer going in. One to Bang for a bottom corner. Matthews sends it in. Headed by Varley. Oh, just over there from Jack Varley. Top of the net. Webster. Nice ball to lay set to the left. Yeah. Gibbons now can get across in, driven across, and it falls at the far post. And Staveley have the lead. It was nicely taken, dropped to the far post, tucked in, and the visitors lead 1 0. Ball sent to the left. Gibbons will chase it. He put in a good ball for the, the goal that separates the teams. Dixon's dropped that. Lacey does well at the far post. Finds that was Matthews. good football there. Four met four in the wall for Stavely. Bassey comes in, clips it up to the far post, headed by Hare. Taron Hare and Lucky there, just, just over the top. underneath it. That's going to break. That breaks to Clegg. Pete's held him up. Clegg, good tackle by Pete. That's behind for the Stavely corner on the left. Good work there from Clegg. Corner comes in now. Langton with it. Headed clear. Drops the edge of the box. Driven in. Oh, it's a great goal. It is a great goal by Finlaw. Smashed it in from just outside the box. Stavely win to lead 2 0. Pete comes in. Drives it low. Straight into the wall. Comes back to Pete. On the right. Pete. Pete's done well, done well Pete there, drives it across barn corner, Matthews, corner comes in, Pete's header, in the back of the net, Nathan Pete, barn back in it, comes to halfway, chips it forward, looking for Tate, good header from Tate, didn't quite fall for Anderson, stably clear away, Hare has it, Sends it to Anderson, dummies it. Play that a bit, Matthews dummy, to the touchline. Uh, Matthews has got it. Up from the corner flag. Dispossessed. Matthews, right, Matthews is deceptively fast, isn't he? It certainly is. Pete. Farley. Hinchcliffe. Tate. It's the drive. 2-2. It's a terrific strike from Grant wow. Tate. And Barton are level. Terrific strike from Grant Tate. Two to his. 20 yards out. Right foot it in. And Barton have come from nowhere to be level. Two goals in two minutes. The first one has been credited to Nathan Pitt. Matthews now, edge of the area, trying to find space out to cross all the shot. Corner to Barton. Grand Tate from the right. Tate swings it over. Headed away by Langton. Matthews has it back though. Sends it forward, Plummer's under that, heads it on, doesn't reach Hinchcliffe, it's Barton corner. Oh, a little bit congested around the penalty spot. Ball comes across now. Head gets in! Oh, just wide from gets Luke up, Anderson. Thinks the keeper to it, but to head it just wide. Barton didn't really want the advantage there though, and yeah, given breaks down the left, away. drives the ball in. Missed on the far post. Can't see where the advantage was. No. Offside, this stage of the game. 
Oh, just wide. I think we were supposed to go off to AFC Mansfield for the following Tuesday, but obviously that game was off due to a COVID issue. Uh, and then we had <laughs> had the next game, which was Yorkshire Amateur. Yeah, for yeah let's, uh, let's move on. Yeah, for me, it was, dis it was disappointing. It was, um, you know, as a manager, like the players, sometimes you've got to hold your hands up as a manager. And at 2 nil, you know, we made two mistakes that led to goals and then it changed us. And they're a team that are going to punish you. You know, they've beaten a number of teams this season. Uh, you only have to look at who they've just left to go to Liversidge, Ash Flynn. Um, I don't think they'll be in our league this season. I do feel we, we should have competed for longer. Um, but at 2-0, I could have made the decision to part the bus and keep it at 2-0 or go for broken. I probably got it wrong in that game. I still felt that we could have got made it 2-1, which we did have chances. But looking back now, I should have just you know, parked the bus with the lads, gone a bit more defensive and maybe caught them on the counter. But you, know, you only have to look at their squad. One of their lads got called up to Gibraltar international team. Um, you know, this, this week, uh, you know, Casey Stewart's played a lot higher. They bring in, uh, you know, they bring on Liam Flanagan, who's been he's been one of the cornerstones at Selby for many, many years. And, uh, and you know, that I don't want to credit too many teams, uh, but I do feel that they, if they don't win it, I'd be surprised. Uh, they've got two good managers there as well, but I just think manager, me as a manager, I should have maybe managed that a bit differently, but. You live and learn like the players do. I do as a manager too. Well, I, I blamed um, Matt Jones, the league secretary, for that because he was also at the Grimsby game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and was standing behind the goal for the um, Yorkshire Amateur game as well. So I suspect he's a jinx. <laughs> it, and, and just with Matt, Matt Jones, he's, he's a really nice guy. I was managed to chat to him and speak to him. And if anyone's got a stressful time in this league, it's him. Uh, yeah. If he's hearing this, you know, I fully respect his job and how hard it must be, but we can have a few less Tuesday night games. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Unless they're yeah, home, I don't mind them at home. <laughs> yeah, we, we're almost, almost to a third of our games played now. Now for the best of the action from Barton Town against Yorkshire Amateur. And in it goes. Back out to this right hand side, and it's in by Tyrone Hare. Oh, good chance for Barn! Oh! Great save by the keeper there. Right footed, it's going to come in. And it comes right footed. Good header by Nathan Pete there. As Charlie Dixon yells at his defence to get out. Back in by Amateur, towards the far post. Good header, Josh Lacey. And Matthews completes the clearance as Scott Phillips chases this down. He gets to it. Back heel, through to Batty, and another nice touch through to Matthews on, on this left hand side, gets the cross in, good cross as well, just a bit too deep as Amateur looked to clear, and then he shepherded it out for a throw in, Barton looking really confident here, some nice touches, Matthews has got his hand up on this left, but instead it goes to Phillips, he turns, one on one with the defender, he shoots, Oh, and it's just a yard or two over. Phillips looking really dangerous here. And away it goes from Charlie Dixon on this right-hand side. Plummer's up for this one. Varley challenging. Back to the keeper. Slice from Trenary there. As Scott Matthews has it. He takes him on down this left-hand side. Jinx. And he manages to play the ball in. As Barton intercepts again. Nathan Pete with a left footed cross this time. And Trenary gathers. Out to Murky. He plays it long. So this left hand side. Tracked by Varley. On this left foot for Amateur. Back on his right into the area. Good header by Taron Hare. And it's Fogarty. And he shoots. Great save, Charlie Dixon, in swinging this time. And it's a header by Nathan Pete. Taron Hare with a knockback. Crawford. And it's back into the box. As Fogg 
Fogarty shoots. But Nathan Peat was tracking them all the way. And the ball goes out for a goal kick. As Trenary takes a quick one into the centre circle. He, and they play into Stewart. Who crosses quickly. Fogarty with a chance of great reaction shared by Charlie Dixon. Barton fell asleep there but not Dixon. As amateur line up. The corner kick on this left hand side, it's going to be right footed in swinging. In it goes. Matthews challenges, but Henry's out here, he shoots, and it's going to be another corner. As Henry lines this throw up on the left hand side, he's been a bit of a danger for Amateur. He's not a tall player, but he's certainly got a bit of pace about him. Alright, as here he is now. He takes it into the box, he takes three on and he gets the ball in oh, and it hits the bar and goes straight out. But again he's causing a danger. They play it quickly into Varley. Back out to Plummer. In it goes towards the box and it's Phillips here. He turns. Plays a nice ball in, just intercepted by Amateur there. Nice play there by Barton. As it's Amateur in the middle of the pack. Out it goes to Merke. He plays it into Fogarty. He turns. Well watched by Taron Hare. Although Fogarty fans Henry in a bit of space here on this left hand side. And the ball goes in. Well watched by Varley. Excellent defending there. And it's a quick touch by Batty. And here we are. Anderson's through here if he can get there. Oh, and Henry Trenery does really well. Here we go, a chance for Phillips. Oh, and it's a good save by Trenery. Dives well over that. Batty coming forward for an option. Lacey ignores him. No, he doesn't. Back to Batty. Bad touch by him. Lacey slides in. Batty tries to make amends here. Fogarty's in. And it's a goal for Fogarty. Sloppy play by Barton there from their own throwing as they try and overplay it. As Trenary kicks away for the goal kick, Fogarty wins it. Out wide it goes to Adam Priestley. He takes him on, dink into the box. Important header by Taron Hare. And Plummer completes the clearance. Phillips chasing this down. As Henry hacks it back. Good header by Nathan Pete. Anderson challenges Nathan Pete again. And he finds Phillips. Oh, he just can't control it. He finds Priestley. No offside. Into the box. Nodded on by Fogarty. Murkey is on the ball now. Space in the middle here. As Phillips here is. Can he make something of this? He sends it in. Out, out left it goes to Anderson. He plays it in. Anderson with a chance to shoot here. He shoots. Handball, says the fans. I also thought it was a handball. Referee says nothing given. Left it goes to Scott Matthews. He turns back. Oh, a bit of a dangerous move there. As Barn amateur under pressure for Fogarty, it goes out left. Space here, the shot, and it's gone in. I think it's Casey Stewart with the finish there. Okay, Murke making the overlap here, and he got and he gets the ball into the box now. Jinx on his right foot. Well saved, Charlie Dixon. He catches well. He looks to throw it out, but instead opts to kick towards Anderson. Good header by Beeston. Pete wins the ball, middle of the park. Pete with an opportunity here. And it's in through to Phillips. Can he score? Can he score? Second goal through to and it's in for Byrne. Forgive me, the ball's gone out. 
And it's your fault for all of the money that that was in. Great work by Nathan Pete in the middle there to create the opportunity. That's got to give Barton some confidence. Matthews it is with this corner kick. In it goes. Header out by Matt Dempsey. But well defended by Amateur. As in we go now. It's a bit too long for Phillips that time. Oh, here we go! Whoa! Keeper makes the right fumble, but he gets away with it. Amateur looking dangerous on the break here. And Taron Hare did the right thing there by dealing with that. As Amateur take their time here. In it goes to the box. Dixon with a catch and away. On to Grant Tate. And Amateur still have it on this left hand side. Back into the box. Nearly went straight in, for, but for a good save for Charlie Dixon. However, goal kick's been given. Long it goes to substitute Siddall. Hacked clearance. Good clearance it was there. To, De to Priestley who's in here. Works on to his right. And it's a good finish. It's a really good finish into the Barton goal on the left hand side. Clearance by Beeston. Plenty of space out left here for Casey Stewart. He shoots. Saved by Dixon this time. Casey Stewart, number 11. As the corner comes in. And it's a header and it's another goal for Yorkshire Amateur. Priestley again. He plays it left this time. Fisher in the middle of the park. He finds Plummer. He finds Siddall. Siddall with a touch. Phillips takes over. Out wide to Tate. He gets it in the box. Anderson with a header. Oh, really good chance for Anderson. Offered here. Plenty of space for him. He takes on one, two, three. Out wide. And good smother by Charlie Dixon. Really good work by him. As again, amateur in no rush to take this. Trying to run that clock down. And they found the Crawford. Again he makes a jinky run. And it's in the box. And he's oh, just hit the bar there for Amateur. It's nearly a fifth for them. On to Matthews. He heads it on. Matthews he's come to Matthews' feet now. He, nice ball out to Grant Tate on this right hand side. Crossing opportunity. And it goes in. Oh, and it's just gone out for a goal kick, it was a good ball in by Grant Tate, went right off the face of the goal, Beeston here for Amateur he plays it long, good header by Fisher and Plummer attempts to knock it up but it's fallen here to, to Amateur, chance for Murke and it's in for Yorkshire Amateur's fifth it's a bad throw here Grant Tate now Finds Matthews, he drives, takes on one, two, three. And it's a foul there by fullback Henry. As Matthews lines up the free kick, along with Siddall. I feel like Matthews is going to win that argument as he won the free kick. Let's have something for the fans, Barton. Four players in the wall here for Amateur, and it is going to be Matthews, left footed. He strikes it, left footed, and it's over. I, I think, from a chairman's point, point of view, um, my point on the Yorkshire game, yeah, you know, their favourites to, to win the league, uh, yeah, that they were a very good side. But it, it, it just, you know, me and Rob had a chat after the game and it just proves 
uh, how far away we are from you know winning this uh, league and this league gets tougher every year every year it, it gets to a to a tougher and you know there's some teams that throw quite a lot of a money at it i mean yorkshire amateurs get 60 70 crowd yeah. uh, and the, the, they're paying you know you know rumors that they were they're paying a lot of money um but me and Rob discussed it afterwards and a game like that for me is, is disappointing for the result but it's also good because it just shows how far away we are and what we need to do as as a club to be as as good as them and you know so you know 50-50 disappointing with, with the result but also it makes us go back to the drawing board as as, as I sort of say right we need to improve here or, or you know we need to improve improve here both for myself and the Rob um, so in in a funny way again big crowd disappointing because obviously the all world went home look, looking at a 5 nil loss but um, I, we can take good points out of that 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 game and it also the players we, we go off and think right you know and they should you know, go on and think I should have done this better, or you know. So, in in a way, sometimes that's needed. 100%. That's my personal point. Yeah, I'd, I'd fully agree with what Mark said there. I think the only disappointing thing for me was I felt that up until the mistake, we were the I'd say we were the be- one of the better sides really. That you know, we had, they had chances, we had chances. You know, they. I even think had, Rob. They, I they, think Rob. I, so, sorry, Rob, I think we both agreed that if we would have gone in nil nil at half time, yeah, I think agree. it would have been a different second, second, second half. Yeah, and like you said, you, you learn more from your losses than you do your wins. You learn a lot about your players. You learn a lot about yourself as a manager, and you know, self reflection is is a good thing. So, like Mark said, sometimes you know, if we'd have lost that one nil or two nil, yeah, it would have looked better on paper. But you know, the gap does need to close from us and the bigger teams and. I feel this this break in the season has given me time to reflect on things in the squad. It gives the lads times to to build on what they need to do. And, you know, credit to the lads. I've had Noel, Noel ring me, kind of get down to the ground and do a little bit. He's out trying to run now and get back fit. Charlie's always putting effort in. Uh, the lads are always in the gym doing what they need to do. And it's, I think the season reflects the results. It's been very inconsistent for every team. And, I think the results are showing that as well this season. Um, barring Yorkshire Amateur and Liversidge, really, every team above that's got battered at one stage. Every team's won and lost games. So I think, you know, I do think there's still a lot to play for in this league. Um, uh, and we're, you know, we're ready for the challenge. Uh, you know, I'd like to think when I do come back, well, you know, when we do come back, uh, I hope it's as soon as possible, but I could see it being extended till after New Year. Um, we want to go out. We know what we're expected of us now. We've got the players, no injuries, no excuses. Um, and, and that's, you know, every other game, we've got something we could... I'm not one to talk about excuses, but we have had a number of tampering conditions, whereas, you know, when we come back fresh, we haven't. The only one will be is we've, we've not been training as a team, but, you know, stop that, we've got to go and win games now. So if this lockdown finishes at the beginning of December... How soon after that do you think we... Well, presumably the players will want to get back to training first. For me, I'd like to do it as soon as possible. The danger you've got now is we might go into... You know, we might come out of this lockdown, but you might have a number of games called off because of bad pitches or weather. You usually get around January to February time. You, you might lose two or three games in your month. Um, yeah. But what they've got to do now is you know, incorporate these uh, November games that have been missed as well. So, for me, if they said they're going to extend the season, I'd, I'd probably snap their hand off and say, yeah, that's right. I'd be more prone to do that than cram too many games in. Um, but, you know, whatever the league decides, it's tough for everyone. The one thing we do not want, or I certainly don't want, is null and void. Or points per goal is, you know, it's a nice way of settling it. But for me, just... It, do everything we can to finish the season. And just to, to sort of finish things up, finish things off, what what are people's thoughts on what's been the best goal scored this season and who's been the star man player wise this season? I think we're all gonna say the same thing. Yeah. For me, goal wise, it's between Grant Grant and Batty against Nairsborough. I think Batty's against Nairsborough is technically the best. 
Grant against Spalding was up there, and then Grant against Staveley was, you know, it was a, it felt like a whole team club goal. So for me, I'm going to go Grant against Staveley. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Great. Yeah. yeah. For me, you know. It, the whole squad's been excellent for me as a manager. They've been very easy to manage. You know, Nath Pete and Nath Robinson, I speak to them daily. Um, you know, Nath Pete's working as a plumber now and he puts his tools down. He has half an hour with me and Nath Robinson's a full-time teacher going through his A licence and I speak to them more than uh, my missus at times. Um, and I think that collectively, all the lads have been good. But for me, the standout one, I would... I'd have to say it's a toss-up between Scott Matthews and Charlie Dixon for me. That's no discredit to any of the other lads. I just think these two have stood out. You know, Charlie's kept us in games and Scott's tried to win his games, as of all the lads. But I just feel these two, they've been what... If I was a fan, they'd be the ones I'd want to watch. Ideally, not Charlie, but um, I think he's been excellent. Yeah, I think all the players that, that play for the squad this season, all the players are, are, are putting 110% in. So sometimes it's not fair to pick out an individual, like Rob says. Um, but if you had, had to, then yeah, you know, I think A. Scott has, has been a very good A. a signing. But all of them have, to, to, to be fair. And the pleasing thing, thing for me is every all the 20 squad, even when they come off the bench, uh, giving Rob myself, the club, the fans, uh, everybody involved with the club, they're, they're, they're giving it 110%. So, hey, players, if you're listening to, to me, thank you. Yeah, just on that, you know, um, on behalf of myself and the players, we thank, obviously, the work that you guys do. And obviously, the, the lads love all the media that you do, Aaron, and obviously the radio this season, the clips. And for myself, Trev, I've, I've never had to write a programme note yet. It's been brilliant the way you do it. And then just on behalf of um, the squad, the players, um, you know, Nath, Nath and Sid, uh, thanks to you, Mark, all the, you know, committee members, the board members, Kim, Aaron, uh, Sophia, um, Lynn, you know, you know, massive, massive thanks to them. We've got a long way to go and it's a, you know, Rome won't built in a day. It's, um, you know, I looked at this as a, you know, sort of a two to three year project, really. You know, was, for me, the main thing was to build a local squad. And then to get that local squad performing, to then build us up the league. Um, and you need a lot of key people to do that. Um, but no, it's been exciting. I've really enjoyed it. The players are enjoying it. They love being at the club. And players just love to be supported. And you know, the final thanks for me is to the fans that are coming. Um, you know, you guys, you give us that extra 10%. Um, you know, we know we're backed in the boardroom. We know we're backed by the media and... Uh, and you know everyone at the club but the fans are the ones that help us out just as much we don't always get the chance to say thanks to them